Hello, my name is Christophe. Uh, I am an applications architect at the Flow Firm, headquartered in, uh, in Seattle and called Davis Wright Remain. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the specific property pane, so what you called earlier the edit pane in, uh, in the SharePoint uh, web parts and uh, how I, uh, I combined it and made it work with React Portal. So, um, a few words about uh, so my recently published solutions. Uh, I've, I've been working uh, with SharePoint. So, I started working with SharePoint in April uh, of 2004. Uh, I've released a number of solutions over the years, but uh, uh, more on my personal uh, blog or my uh, personal stuff. And uh, this year, uh, I've done more heavy contributions to the community. And uh, so this is um, a short list of what I've done. Uh, and in particular, that was also uh, 2022 was my first year to start publishing uh, known modules. So today, the ones we're going to focus on are uh, the property po pane portal. So this is a node module that you're going to uh, install through an N NPM install. And then the sample, the related sample that you can find on PNP is React PPP. And then uh, whatever, because it's supposed to be a series uh, of uh, different controls I'm going to showcase. So uh, right now there's one, but uh, that's supposed to, uh, more is supposed to come in, uh, in the future. I'm mentioning also some uh, other work here because it's kind of related to what I'm presenting today and uh, I think it's worth taking a look. So the property pane wrap is another solution that is supposed to help with the property pane. And uh, I'm also listing here the cherry picked content web part because it's also a solution that is using the portal. So uh, other stuff uh, to explore if you're uh, if you're interested. Okay, so the objective for today, property pane portal. So we are looking at the right hand side of, uh, of this web bar. So it's the one that you trigger when you click on this little uh, pen here in the top left. And it's allowing to open the property pane. And what the property pane is, is uh, that configuration form that allows you to enter specific uh, values, specific parameters that are going to uh, to customize your web part. So in my screenshot here, for example, I have picked uh, San Diego. Did I mention I'm uh, out of San Diego? <laughs> uh, nice reminder here. And uh, so I pick the location and this is rendered here. So I chose to render it as a map. So uh, here in the, in the main web part. So the objective here is to create those custom controls. And uh, the idea here with the property pane portal is that you can add as many controls, any kind of control you want from any kind of library, you can insert them in, uh, in the property pane. So if we take a, a closer look at the, the code, uh, on, on here on the left hand, hand side, you can see an example of a property pane with uh, some controls, description, slider, checkbox, drop down. So uh, I would say some standard uh, controls. And if you look at the code in uh, SPFX, this is what it looks like on the right. So uh, it could be a, a little bit surprising at first, but SPFX is not using directly elements or React components. It uses this uh, this wrapper function. So a kind, I would say it's a kind of flow code here we are having in the property pane, where uh, uh, the SharePoint framework offers this wrapper function that takes care of all, uh, you know, uh, everything that's happening behind the scene, and all you have to do is uh, uh, include that JSON to configure the uh, the control. So th this is very uh, convenient, uh, very uh, very easy to use. The issue is, what if you want to ins uh, insert a control that is not covered by the out of the box uh, functions? So that's one of, uh, of the questions here. Other question is, what if you want some interaction between the controls? So for example, you have a cascading dropdown. You want to select a site and then you need to select a, a list in the site, or you want to select country and then you want to select a city in that country. So 
all of this is not covered by these out of the box functions. What you can do, uh, so what Microsoft uh, offers you is to create custom controllers. So you have all this extensibility model that is available within uh, the property pane. Simply, if you start using it, you're going to see that it's not very straightforward. It takes some time uh, to get into it. So, uh, and uh, maybe uh, I'd be interested, uh, you know, um, uh, for for you uh, li listening to this presentation. I'd be interested to hear how you you deal with that. So. How, when you have to a need for custom controls, how do you insert them? How do you build them and have them in the property pane? Here, uh, I'll just mention that uh, on PNP, and it was mentioned a little bit earlier in the call, uh, um, a new release. Uh, in PNP, we have those two packages. We have the reusable React controls that go in the main panel of the SharePoint framework, and then we have dedicated property pane controls that are supposed to go in the property. So uh, that's currently, uh, I think, I, I would say uh, probably the best solution I've seen around. The issue here is that, uh, so you're going to use the ones on the right to, um, to build your property pane. The issue is that you're limited to the ones that are made available by the library. And uh, the other issue is that maybe you already have your own set of your own library, your own set of controls, and these are the ones that you would like to use. So that's what I'm going to to demonstrate today. Uh, it's how you can use any controls you already have, and you can push them uh, to to the property pane. You're not limited to uh, this, uh, this set of out-of-the-box controls or the property pane controls from, uh, from this package. So what, what I'm going to do, as an, just as an exercise, what I'm going to do today is instead of using the package on the right, which is the one you're supposed to do when you do property pane, I'm actually going to take the controls from the package on the left and insert it in the property pane just as a demo that uh, you don't need those uh, those specific uh, property pane controls. Oh, okay, so uh, it seems that it's demo time. Let me try and switch to my demo here. Okay, so, uh, so this is my demo. This is the code part, and uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll have some time to get back to, uh, to it. But for now, let me go to, to the workbench here. And I have already started this uh, this demo, this uh, web part. So I'm going to click here on uh, on the little pen, and I'm opening the property pane controls. Uh, I'm here in uh, in light mode. Uh, I have the same demo in uh, in dark mode works too. Okay. So what you see here, I have uh, four. I have created four pages for this uh, specific demo. Uh, first page, I have the PNP controls, so those are the ones we just talked about. Not the ones on the, on the right, we are using the ones on the left. I have also regular HTML controls. So uh, this is a big evolution we've seen uh, last year, that uh, now that we're not supporting Internet Explorer anymore or uh, Legacy Edge, we can start using those directly instead of going to a library. We can start using directly the HTML5 controls here uh, in uh, well in our solutions and in particular in the property pane. So that's exactly what I have here. Uh, let me do a demo while I'm here. So for example, I'm going to pick a start date of uh, April 11th here, and then I'm going to pick an end date. And you see that. Uh, all the dates before April 11th have been disabled. I'm just using the uh, here the capabilities of HTML5 controls, and I'm going to pick this one. So again, here you just have out of the box HTML controls. Okay, I'm going just to play with the toggle here, which is uh, well a little bit uh, more uh, advanced customization, but still out of the box uh, HTML controls. Okay, another one. Uh, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So Microsoft Graph Toolkit has a number of controls and I can use them here directly. So I'm going to type, let's have uh, some very famous people in my team here. 
uh, let's type Patty and OK. And uh, well, it's not uh, spectacular here, but you can see that the web part has been updated with the value. OK, and the last one I have, I have uh, this fluent ex uh, UI example. So that's actually the one that uh, w w with which I started because I, I was creating a solution for app source. And uh, I used uh, North Star, uh, fluent UI North Star at the time. So uh, this is, let me just play with the color picker here. So uh, again here, I'm just uh, going to the fluent UI North Star page and doing a copy paste and the control is working here. And uh, let me move back to my presentation. Okay, so let's take a look now at the code. So a, a few words about portals. Uh, I, I put a general definition here, uh, a technique to transport to a distant, seemingly inaccessible place. In our case, so we are uh, in the context of React and uh, UI libraries like React and Vue have such capabilities. And uh, so you can see just a, a very simple uh, sample here. It, it comes from React DOM, create portal of child container. And what it does, it allows you to take that child that uh, may reside in one place of the DOM and transport it to the container. So this is a technique that is uh, used in general for tooltips and panels, uh, that kind of thing. The idea is that you don't necessarily have full control of the container. So this, what it allows you to do is have the child in your own branch, in your own tree of a DOM, where you have full control. So you're going to apply, uh, you, uh, you can apply context, you can apply a theme, you can apply maybe some, uh, uh, manage some state, and then just display it in its container. And in our case, the container is going to be the property pane. So, the idea is we, man we manage the child wherever we want, and then when it's ready, we push it to the container. And uh, the container is going to have, so we're talking about that gateway that is allow us, going to allow us to go, uh, to go to the container, and the container is going to have a beacon that identifies the proper location where the control uh, or the set of controls are supposed to lay. Okay, so uh, in terms of uh, architecture, this is what uh, it's going to look like. And here, so uh, I'm going to just look at, uh, at this um, column here, uh, the property pane. So this is where you would have the uh, built-in controls I showed earlier. So it's going to be property pane text, for example. Those uh, controls made available by SPFX. But in addition to that, I will have that custom control that is going to serve as a beacon. And it's going to be the same re reusable control host that we're going to put wherever we need it. And then we are managing in a separate place here. Uh, that is going to be more the body of the web part. We are managing that these controls that can come from different uh, controls libraries. And this is what the portal is going to do. It's that uh, those yellow arrows that you see here, this is going to transport your controls in place in the property plane. Okay, um, in terms of installation, so again, this is a, a node module, so you're going to install it. You, you would uh, uh, provision your SharePoint uh, framework web part and then install property plane portal. And then we are going to have, uh, as part of this uh, module, two components available. You're going to have the property pane host that is going to go in, uh, in the property pane. That is going to be that bacon I was talking about, uh, for the recipient, recipient of the control. And then uh, in uh, the web part body itself, we are going to have that gateway, so property pane portal components that is going to take care of sending the uh, uh, the controls to the right place. So uh, uh, in, in the in the interest of time, I'm just going to stick to to the slides here, uh, not show the uh, the actual code, but it, it's supposed to look the same. 
So uh, this is what it would look like in the property pane. So you would have property pane host that is just the generic control. You see here that I am uh, trying to implement four different controls from MGT, person, people picker, group picker, the team speaker. And uh, so the only property and I need to pass to that control, to that uh, generic control, is the context of the work part. So what it really needs uh, is just the ID, the instance ID of the work part. I'm passing the whole context because uh, it's kind of simpler. But this is the only thing you have to do. So the name of the property and then the context in the property plane host. And now, if I move to uh, the body of the work part, then uh, the body is going to look like that. So same, I have my property pane portal component, which is a, a React function component. Also, uh, it's going to uh, leverage the context of the web part to be able to talk to the host. And then I just include, so within my property pane portal, I just include my controls the same way I would do it uh, if I was uh, uh, putting them in the body of the web part. So uh, uh, here, people picker. Uh, I, I have so these examples. For example, if you go to uh, mgt.dev, if you go to a playground of mgt, you're going to go take those samples, and you could just do a copy paste and put them, make them available in the property plane. The only additional thing you need to do is to add that data property here. That is kind of is going to give the the control. Uh, or it's going to give the property plane portal the address of the destination. So in the, let me go back to the previous slide. Here I had uh, the name of the property in the, the property pane. So this is uh, the address, the destination, and I'm just entering the address and it's going to go to the right place. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it. Uh, 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 a few, yes, a few thank you, a few special thanks here to the people who have helped me on the way, encouraged me. So uh, you recognize your name here on the on the slide. Uh, please try this uh, this property pin portal. It's uh, I would say it's not you know the the main uh, the main path. It's more out of the box uh, thinking. So. I'd be interested to know how far this can go. Okay, thank you. And uh, back to you, Patrick. All right, great stuff.